Hey guys, it's Henry Story. Welcome to my channel to yet another video where I want to compare the camera capabilities of the iPhone 16 Pro Max and the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter lens. I recently got this lens and I love it. It has stabilization, one of the only ones, as you know. And uh, this is not my iPhone 16 Pro Max. This is actually my assistant's. He just upgraded. I don't think I'll be upgrading this year because it's just one additional button and just a few upgrades that I don't think are necessary. Anyway, it's gonna be fun to compare the iPhone 16 Pro Max camera with this camera. Let's do a series of tests, just testing image quality, the bokeh, comparing low aperture on the R5 and cinematic mode on the iPhone, for example. Stability, also, I wanna walk around with these cameras. I think the iPhone's gonna win on that one. Just hooking them up with this microphone and see if there's a difference in sound. Anyway, keep watching if you're interested in this comparison. Let's have some fun, film some B-roll. Maybe after making this video, I'll decide not to use my Canon R5 and 15 to 35, you know, $5,000 setup to create my YouTube videos. Maybe I'll just whip out my iPhone because it might be easier after all. And test number one, I have a bug on my lens. There you go. Image quality, let's test out the image quality between the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter lens and the iPhone 16 Pro Max, brand new, my assistant's phone. So on the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter lens, the settings on my camera are, since I'm recording in 24 frames per second, 50 shutter, that's standard. That means I have an ND filter, but on the iPhone, there's no ND, so it's gonna have to do its own thing. Anyway, I am in ISO 400, that's base ISO for Canon log on the Canon R5. And I'm also shooting log on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, Apple log and ProRes to get the most out of the footage. And I will color grade it and show you the difference actually. So this is the color graded version, but this is the log version. Now, this is the iPhone 16 Pro Max color graded. This is the Canon R5 log. And this is the Canon R5 color graded. What do you think? Do you like the Canon R5 better? Which has the better image quality, Canon R5 or iPhone 16 Pro Max? Let me know. This is the Canon R5. That's the image quality you can expect from this camera. This is the log footage, Canon log, and this is the color graded footage. Log footage, color graded footage. Image quality of the iPhone 16 Pro Max. What do you think? We're in wide angle, 24 frames per second, 4K, just like the Canon R5. This is the log footage, and this is the color graded footage. This is the image quality test. So tell me, what do you think about the image quality comparison between the iPhone 16 Pro Max and the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter lens. Let's do a little zoom here, 1X. Ah, you like doing that 1X with the with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, I know, I saw that. That's, that looked, that was cool. Now you don't have to touch the screen, you can just move your finger on the top. That is pretty cool. Test number two, we're testing the depth of the camera, the aperture of the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter lens, which has a 2.8 aperture, compared to the iPhone 16 Pro Max with the cinematic mode, because it doesn't really have aperture, real aperture, it's just a digital aperture. So, um, Actually, when making this test, we struggled setting up because the iPhone cannot get the same image that the camera has, believe it or not. It cannot shoot cinematic mode in a wide angle. And also, it cannot shoot cinematic mode in anything other than what? Oh, log. Okay, okay. The iPhone 16 Pro Max cannot shoot cinematic mode in a wide angle. It has to be 1x or 2x or 5x, I, I think. Oh, not even 5x, 1x or 2x. Also, it cannot shoot cinematic mode in log. So you have to go with the standard option. So now you're looking at me through uh, the iPhone 16 Pro Max in cinematic, but not log. It's just uh, 24 frames per second and 1x zoom because it can't do wide. Here on the Canon R5, I have flexibility. I can get down, do a completely wide 15 millimeter, 2.8 aperture and grab what I wanted to grab, the, the exact shot I wanted to grab with City Hall blurred out and I'm in focus. So that's a point for the Canon R5 and the 15 to 35 millimeter. That's really, it's much more convenient and easy to use. You can't even do the same angle, the same shot on the iPhone. So that's a point for the Canon R5 and image quality, if you really look at it, of course, I would say that the Canon R5 will have a better image. But if you just look at them side by side real quick, most people will not be able to tell, right? 
many photographers, I think many videographers would not be able to tell. And I know I'm going to get some hate for that, you know, because obviously the Canon R5 has a spectacular image compared to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which has a smaller sensor, etc. But I'm a realist. I look at things through my client's eyes and what they see, uh, they can't tell the difference between really high quality footage and normal footage and bad quality footage. So if you put the iPhone footage next to the R5 footage, they're not gonna be able to tell the difference. Most people are not gonna be able to tell the difference. Point to the Canon R5, next test. Here we have the iPhone 16 Pro Max again in a 1X because you can't shoot cinematic mode on a wide angle. And my camera is there, so we're gonna switch to focus on the camera and see if I'm blurred out, I'm blurred out. Now I'll focus back on me. That's the quality of focus that you can expect from the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now we're testing out the aperture depth of the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter. This lens is awesome because it has a 2.8 aperture and I can get really close, but actually we zoomed in a little bit to compare it better with the iPhone 16 Pro Max because it can only do cinematic mode at 1x and 24 millimeters is about the same as 1x. So right now it's focused on me. If we focus on the camera back there, you see I'm out of focus now. If you focus back on me, so tell me in the comments, what do you think? What, what looks like the better focus uh, change or aperture or bokeh? Is the bokeh better on the Canon R5 or is the bokeh better on the iPhone 16 Pro Max? I would say probably, most certainly, it is on the Canon R5 because the depth of field is digital on the iPhone 16. And this is test number three, stabilization with the Canon R5, 15 to 35 millimeter lens. All the stabilization is turned on. The lens, the IBIS, the uh, digital stabilization is all the way up. What do you think? Because I wanna, I wanna battle with the iPhone 16. Let's see, let's see if this is a good rival. Now let's go a little faster. Let's introduce some shake, shake into this. Let's see how it handles. Well, don't shake it purposely. Just like, just walk. <laughs> okay. You're trying to make the iPhone look good. We had to do it, we had to do it. We had to run with the Canon R5 and the 15 to 35 to see how it would handle me running. So, chase me down. Okay, uh, let's see how that stacks up. I think the iPhone's gonna win. We're testing out the iPhone 16 Pro Max stabilization, very important. And I, uh, I have a feeling that the iPhone 16 is gonna win this one because cameras are not uh, so well stabilized. The iPhone 16 has a lot of great software stabilization. This is on normal mode, just not, it's not on action mode or anything, not extra stabilized. It's just the normal iPhone stabilization, 4K, 24 frames per second. What do you think? What if we go a little faster? This is the same test on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, but now we're on action mode. So what do you think? We can run with this. I know, I know the iPhone is incredible with this mode. It can stabilize anything. I could, I'm gonna start running right now and see how it stabilizes it. It's awesome, right? But there's some limitations. One is that it goes down to 2.8K. You cannot shoot in 4K in action mode. Now, uh, let me try running a little bit and seeing how this stabilizes it. So that's the iPhone 16 Pro Max in action mode. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, would you prefer to have stabilization with the Canon R5 or with the iPhone 16 Pro Max? This is test number five. We're testing out the microphone capabilities of both cameras, the Canon R5 and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And for the Canon R5, I'm not hooking up any microphone. I know I have this DJI mic too, but uh, don't be fooled, I'm not using it right now. I'm just using the camera mic. And uh, I know a lot of you know that the Canon camera uh, mic is not gonna be good enough. Probably the iPhone camera is better. What do you think? I don't know, because I'm making the video right now, I can't hear, but which is better? The Canon camera's mic or the iPhone 16's mic? And by the way, I will have processed this audio in Final Cut Pro. I will have applied my, my edits to make it sound better, to remove the noise, do a little bit of noise reduction, but still, you may be able to tell the difference. But you know what, I'm gonna compare it. I'm gonna do just the raw sound unedited. This is the raw sound unedited on the Canon, and this is the raw sound unedited on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. What do you think it's better? Now I'm gonna process both audio files and uh, see if there's any difference. This is the processed audio file from the Canon R5, 
and this is the processed audio file from the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now, I'm going to plug in the microphone and see if there's any difference at all to compare the four. All right, so I plugged in the DJI Mic 2 into the Canon R5, and this is what you can hear with that. It should be a million times better. This is the unedited version of the audio, and this is the edited version. When I apply a little bit of uh, effects, noise reduction, I also apply a limiter and a compressor, etc. So it should sound much better. Now let's test it on the iPhone 16. And this is the audio coming from the iPhone 16 Pro Max plugged in with the external microphone, DJI Mic 2. Is there a difference? I, I don't know if there should be a difference between the Pro Max, the 16 Pro Max and the Canon R5 when you plug in the DJI Mic 2. Back to the office to finalize this video. So the verdict on filming on the iPhone is I will not be recording myself on the iPhone for a variety of reasons. One, it's awkward to use. You'd want to use the back facing camera to record yourself because it's better quality, but then you can't see yourself. That's one of the reasons, but there's others. Like for example, you can't do cinematic mode when you're in wide angle and you can't do log when you're in cinematic mode. So just for those reasons, that's a deal breaker. I would not film professionally. I mean, I would not film my YouTube videos on the iPhone. I would prefer to use the camera, which is made to record and you have flexibility like you saw in this video. The other reason, the other deal breaker just for this, I would not use the iPhone to film is the file transfer was a nightmare. It was a total nightmare. It took a really long time to transfer. When we were at the location, I tried to have my assistant transfer over the files via AirDrop. They were not transferring because they were too big. Like two minutes was like four gigabytes and that was 4K ProRes, Apple Log. And then he tried to send them over via message and that didn't work because they sent over in super low resolution, like 720. So I do not recommend that. I had to plug in his iPhone later into my computer to download the files and that worked, but it's so much easier to do it on the camera. The videos that I'm making in this channel are for other content creators, videographers, photographers. I want to share my experiences and my knowledge in this channel to see if I can help at least the beginners to get into the field, to improve their craft. I hope this video was valuable or at least entertaining to you. If it was, then check out my other videos where I talk about fixing camera overheating or you can even shadow me as I do event photography. And if you didn't like this video for some reason, leave a comment below and tell me what you didn't like about it. What would you suggest so I can improve my future videos? Thank you for watching and see you next time.